For most of us, our first, and sometimes only, taste of racing comes on the streets. If you love cars, this is where it all starts. In the empty parking areas, and on the city streets where you race your mates between stoplights. We do this in the very first cars we owned, or the ones we saved up for later. Then we fiddled with the engines and the suspension until they went faster, and added stripes and stickers so they looked faster too. It's the same around the world. Whether it's on Japanese mountain roads, on Britain's back lanes, or America's super highways. We're talking about affordable heroes. Cars that bring performance to the people. Whether they're smoking around a parking lot or hammering along a city circuit you designed yourself. They aren't the most expensive, and they won't win every drag race. But they all prove one thing. You don't need a million dollars to have a car with a big heart. Each volume contains three series. You'll get to choose which car you'll use for each one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Forza 6. We are now starting the Super Street series, which is basically, as introduced, local affordable heroes. So these are really good cars that don't break your bank. You know, you can actually have a, a race car without literally giving up your house, your, your firstborn, etc., etc. And we're going to start off this Super Street with the Challenger Series. There's a total of four races in here, so let's get her done. Let's select our first series. You are now series. entered in the Challenger Series. Each circuit in this series will challenge... Di let's go choose what kind of car you'll be driving. Sounds good. Let's take Each a look. Each division contains a group of cars from a specific car subculture. Select one of the highlighted divisions below to choose a car from its roster. All right, so I can choose from all sorts of uh, of different, you know, game types, so to speak, or different cars, different classes. Um, Two doors on a small Oh, it's car. Richard Hammond! Lightweight, pokey, skinny tired, rear wheel drive, and affordable. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Yet it takes guts for a manufacturer to produce cars like these. Cars that take the demands of practical motoring and place them on the non-existent back seat. Because really, they're made for one thing. Driving. Even if you have nowhere to go. Okay, well that shuts me the hell up. Richard Hammond is in this, so I wonder if James May and uh, Jeremy Clarkson are as well. I'd be greatly... That would be a nice little surprise. So, let's look at the cars that they recommend. They recommend the 2014 Civic Si. Um, the Mazda RX-8. So, a nice rotary engine, rear-wheel drive. Four-door, <laughs> technically. Uh, we got a Subaru BRZ. Toyota Celica GT4 RC. The Alfa Romeo Zagato. Sprint Zagato. Brilliant looking thing. Another Alfa. GTV6, Alpha Spider. God, look at all these Alphas. Eagle Talon. Yeah, this car was American, but it was actually like a collaboration between, I think, I want to say Ford and Mitsubishi. This became the Eclipse eventually. Anyway, Honda Prelude, not from 94. Lexus SC300, Mazda MX-5. Really good car. Different. This is the new one. It's the previous gen, Mazda Speed MX-5, which you'd think would be faster, but obviously not. Old MX-5, old Mazda RX-7 from 85. Look, what the hell? IDX Nice. Why would there be an... Oh my, you know what? I don't know. I'm going to leave it at that. N Nissan Silva, uh, Silvia, I almost imported one of these from Japan. Oh my god, there's too many cars. 240, Silvia Club. Renault Sport Clio. This was a really, this was quite the monster, actually. Uh, Scion TC, that's an easy no. Uh, Subaru Legacy, GT86, MR2, Celica GT4, MR2 again. Sprinter Torino. This thing, the Toyota Torino, 
Trino, Tr I, can't, I can't remember how I say that. That's a legend. It's such a basic looking car, but there's quite a few of these. I don't know which one I want. You got the hot hatches. Based on that most useful James car Bay. Ahead, the hatchback, these cars are all about power, performance, and, of course, practicality. Hot hatches are cars you can drive every day and in every way. Small and responsive, they're perfect for bombing around tight roads, and when you're done with that, you can use them for shopping trips and other boring things that get in the way of proper driving. Ha! Awesome. This, I never liked this one. The Gilietta, I never really liked the look of it. But it is a hot hatch from Alpha. Fiesta ST, solid car. Oh, God. Don't, I just don't like that. <laughs> VW Scirocco from 88. The Abarth Punto. Ah, yes. The Abarth SS. Abarth 500. So, a Fiat 500 Abarth SS. My uh, father-in-law has one of these. Uh, the Focus RS is the 03. So, this is the one with what? Which one? No, I wonder if they have the RS 500. Oh, my God. The Escort Cosworth. This thing is a legend. Fiesta XR2. Civic Type R. Uh, another Civic Type R. This is 07. This is the UK version and the Japanese version. The North American version looked way different than this. I'm sure we all know that. 04 Civic Type R, 97 Type R, CRX, SI. Look at these all on. Lancia Delta. Brilliant car. Brilliant. Mazda Speed 3. Also a good car. A Peugeot 308 GTI. Renault Clio RS 200. Clio RS. Clio Williams. A uh, Renault 5 Turbo. A Vauxhall Astra 1.6. Oh, this is the Top Gear Edition. That's cool. Vauxhall Corsa. Oh, right. You got to keep in mind, I can't afford some of these. I mean, I have 58 grand. God, that's an expensive one. Vauxhall Corsa. VW GTI VR6. The Mark III version. Volkswagen Corrado, which is actually a very rare car. Uh, Golf GTI. Rabbit GTI. And Scirocco S. I just kind of want to look at these. Ultimate Spocom. I have these are cars that pack big performance into a compact space. And they come from all over the world. Often they're the fastest versions of a particular model. And they squeeze every last drop of power from mass production engines. They also have more aggressive suspension to make them corner better. Plus chunky body kits to help them fight the air and stand out from the others. All right. Ah, and they, they only have one. And they this is the gifted one. The BMW M235i. Look at that power. I may have to choose this one. Look at that. And I don't have to pay any money. I'm right out the gate with a new... Basically, I don't know why they called it this. They should just call this the M2. But I think they actually have an M2. This is basically their M2. But whatever. Uh, let's get out of here. Let's read about the Japanese Street, street Kings. Japan. Home of the noble art of drifting. Made famous by cult movies, manga comics, and console games. All of which celebrated the street racers who baited cops with midnight runs through big cities before escaping to twisty mountain roads in their homegrown coupes, slithering to freedom in clouds of tire smoke. All right, let's see what we got here. Civic Type R, so yeah, this is these are going to be ones we kind of already looked at. SC300, Sylvia Club K, Legacy. Yeah, we've seen all these. RS, this one's new though, RSX Type S. I, I thought it was so stupid how this was front-wheel drive. It makes no sense why this was front-wheel drive. It should have been a rear-wheel drive, but it is what it is. Integra, but then again, so was this, and so was the Civic. So it's kind of in the same kind of, you know... You know, kind of like the, the, the Civic and all that. Front wheel. This was all wheel. Because Subarus. Subarus are usually all wheel. Anyway, let's keep going. Ah, see this? This was for the States. That's what... Acura was sold to the North American market. That's 100% true. This is basically... Like the Integra is basically a Honda Civic. I'm not kidding. It is. That's why there's an American flag by it. It was made from North. It was basically made to confuse Americans and North Amer the North American uh, area. That's all of us, not just Americans, but Canadians as well. To confuse people and they think it's a better car when really underneath it's the same thing as a Honda. 
It, it's a Honda. Just get a Honda and save yourself some money. But anyway, these were these were good ones. These were good Integras because they were the Type R's. Anyways, or sorry, the good Acuras. All right, we got an S2000. Really solid there. Civic Type R, of course. Tons of these. CRX, Mazda Speed MX-5, RX-7. Uh, here's our first Evo. This is the Evo 6. Brilliant. Finally, we get some Evos in here. Uh, the Eclipse GSX. Everyone knows this is the Fast and the Furious car, really. Uh, Mitsubishi Galant VR4. So this is a four-wheel drive. Simple looking thing. Uh, I have this because I have this is the DLC. This is a 10-year. This is the Team Forza uh, 350 Fair Lady Z. So it's pretty powerful. Mo more so than some of the other cars out there, actually. Anyways, um, Fair Lady Z, the regular version. This one's got it is a little bit better in the handling. And the braking, but the acceleration and speed is always sacrificed in the Xbox version of the car. Anyway, Nissan Silvia, we already saw this one. Super Impressed STI, Toyota Celica, MR2, Celica GT4, GT4 RC ST185. This one's got a little bit more power. Uh, the And then the MR2, solid little car as well. All right, I really hope they kept... Uh, Jeremy Clarkson in here. So let's just check out the Rally Day Heroes. These are going to be amazing cars. If you oh, recognize he's not. the cars in this group, it's because you've seen them on TV, flying through icy forests or clinging to a cliff in some far-flung corner of the world. Based on competition rally cars, or at least inspired by them, they have four-wheel drive, big turbochargers, and wings more suited to light aircraft. You feel like you could drive them anywhere, and that no matter how ambitiously you enter a corner, everything will be okay. <laughs> Probably. For the most part. And the only one we have in here is the Golf R. Well, that's kind of upsetting. I guess we're not far enough yet. All right, the classic compact. Let's take a look. The 60s and 70s were all about experimentation, and the cars were no different. Instead of relying on big V8s for performance, some manufacturers extracted as much power as possible from smaller engines and concentrated on making their cars fun, light, and good-looking. So these were things you could really throw around, which meant they inevitably found their way onto the track, paving the way for touring car racing as we know it today. All right, look at this, 75 Fiat X19. Damn, that's a classic, but it's slow. These are going to be slower cars. Ford Capri RS3 100, Lotus Cortina, Mazda RX3. These are old, old, old cars. Uh, Abarth, Fiat, Fiat Abarth 131, Alpha Guilia Sprint, GTA Stradale, and then, of course, the BMW 2002, Datsun, <laughs> Datsun 510, uh, Ford Escort. RS 1800. These were good cars too. Lancia Fulvia. That's a good looking car. Brilliant looking thing. Lotus Elan. Also a tiny, tiny little car, but it's a classic. Mazda Cosmo. Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR from 71. This is the one of the original uh, Skylines. Nissan Fair Lady Z. Look at that. Beautiful little thing. Uh, Toyota Celica GT, original. Look how basic they looked back then. And, an, and a 2000 GT by Toyota. Look at that thing. God, that's nice looking. Anyway, so we've looked at all the cars in this class that we can do. And I'm ready to pick my official car. And we are ready to get into the Challenger series, uh, which is our first series with these cars. And I'm ready to do it. So let's go with the Ultimate Spocom. 